Hey guys, it's the off season and uh, I've had quite a few questions about my fly boxes, what I take on the river and maybe do some explanation on fly selection. So I'm going to do that. Uh, this video, I'm going to just kind of go over what I have on my fly boxes. I'll do another video that talks about when to use different types of flies. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to get into that too much here. Let's just kind of dive into what's in my fly boxes this time. Um, so I'll do one at a time here, go through the, the various fly boxes. Okay, first of all, this is probably my most used fly box. Uh, these are my lighter flies. You know, a lot of these are variations of carp malls, um, which you've seen, or hopefully you've seen some of the carp malls. Um, you know, essentially what this is, is this one doesn't have a tail. It's just basically black craft fur with some rubber legs, a little bit of uh, underbody of the black craft fur here. Um, you know, just my standard cart mall that I use a lot of different places. Um, now, this is the end of the season, so this box needs some cleanup. Um, you know, I have some other small leech patterns in here with some small uh, bead chains. These, I think these are two millimeter bead chain eyes, stainless steel uh, bead chain. Um, and then just different colors of kind of variations of cart malls. This one looks like the rubber legs have torn off, but uh, that's a cart mall tied with some uh, black semi-seal. That's a really good pattern. Um, I got some white ones in here. Uh, I have a chartreuse one. I, I've never actually had that one work, but I tied it for the high visibility aspect of it. Um, and, you know, browns and tans. You'll, you will notice one thing in here is that black is probably the most used color. I find black to be the most consistent producer. Um, color for carp. So that's that side. Okay, so flip over to the other side of it. Um, these are my blind flies. Um, and what are blind flies? Blind flies mean they have no weight on them. So none of these flies in here have any weight at all, right? Um, most of these are just variations of leech patterns, right? That's just a little black, um, black and red semi silk leech. It's a great, great pattern with no weight. Um, Lots of different variations in here. Again, that's another black semi I it, This is a killer pattern for trout and carp. Virtually anything that eats um, <laughs> leeches. Uh, bass, love this little pattern. Crazy simple to tie. Uh, so I have a ton of those in here that I use various places. So anyway, most of these are going to be leech patterns um, with no weight. Um, you know, some of them with rubber legs like this. Uh, this one does have an underwing like that that helps flip the fly over. So even if it hits the bottom... This one should actually rest with hookup. Um, not as well as something with weight, but but that's the kind of stuff I have in here. Again, you'll notice mostly black, some maroons, tans, browns, olives, um, white. Those are kind of the colors that I typically all, you know, no, I always, I always want to make sure I have those with me when I go out on the flats. All right, so going to the next box. Um, let's go to this one first. Okay, these are going to be your standard bead chains. Um, again, this is a black and red semi-seal. Um, leech with a underwing tied like that, right? So again, that wing is tied to help that fly flip over in the water better. Um, this gives it just a little bit more body. And, 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 and then when it's on the bottom, it pokes up just a little bit, um, kind of making it stand out uh, for the carp to see it. Okay, there's a white one, basically the same thing. Um, and a lot of this is the same, right? This brown one here. Uh, I've got some olive ones in here, maroons. Um, got some with ribbing on them. So a lot of these are all tied in the same kind of pattern as like a gotcha or a crazy Charlie, but that's kind of what's in this box. So um, that's my, we're going to call it medium weight. So my other one was my light and extra light. This is my medium weight flies. And then my heavyweight flies. Now, um, this is probably what most people use. Uh, they're heavyweight flies more than anything for carp fly fishing. It's probably the box I use the least. It has its place, um, but it's not the one I use the most. So, so anyway, there's like a crayfish pattern, um, kind of tied like a viverka shrimp um, with some uh, some dubbing on the back. Um, carp mall here with some weight. This is a smaller dumbbell eye that is a heavy eye that is actually probably the the eye that i use the most it's a small dumbbell eye uh, for my heavier weighted flies like this one you see how big it is i mean that that thing just see, sinks like a brick in the water um i do like this in areas where i'm fishing for deeper carp like for instance uh, lake pal a lot of times if you find carp there they're going to be on fairly deep areas i mean you can see them it's usually pretty well it depends on where you're at but it can be pretty clear 
you need something to get down fast to them. It's also a great uh, small mouth and large mouth fly at Lake Powell, by the way. So just, just a crayfish pattern. Um, olive, uh, this is some bigger bead chains. So, so the ones in the other box were uh, the 3.2 millimeter. I think these are like, I think it's over four, might even be five millimeter bead chain. These are pretty heavy. So I have, uh, this is actually a real good pattern too. I mean, it's essentially, again, just like the uh, um, cart mall. I mean, I call it a cart mall and all cart mall. Um, really, really good pattern. Um, I'll do a fly tying video on this, but like I said, it's essentially the same as a cart mall, but it's a great pattern. Um, variations of the same kind of thing, right? Just heavier. Um, all right, so that is that one. Uh, next box. These are kind of my hybrid flies, right? This is probably the kind of flies that uh, most people use more than anything else. Um, you can see a lot of different hybrids up here, you know, all the way from really small ones. Um, you know, this is a great little pattern, especially when you got a lead uh, fish and let them run into it. Uh, my Desert Oasis video, this is one of the flies that I used quite a bit. Great pattern. Um, different variations of hybrids in here. Um, I've got some trouser worms in here. This one's actually... Uh, tied with chenille um and i have some that are tied with uh this is like the more traditional where you use a little piece of the rabbit strip for the tail uh it's a pretty good little pattern too i don't use these as much as i used to um the trouser worms but anyway so it's kind of got my my worms and my hybrid flies um you'll see down here this is kind of a unique one i tied up um it's got a little egg on it so when it sits it sits with that egg sticking up off the bottom like that uh, I've got a few on it. I don't love it. I thought it was going to be better than it was, but it's kind of a cool pattern. So anyway, a couple of those in there. Um, the other side, it's kind of more of the same thing. These are a bunch more hybrids. Um, we got a carp carrot down here. Uh, you know, a few different flies like that. Uh, um, so that's that one, hybrids. Okay, and the last box is kind of my miscellaneous box. Uh, this is just like when I go out, I can see it's kind of a mess. Um so I always have a couple gurglers with me. This is not a bass fly. Or excuse me, this is not a carp fly. It's a bass fly. Great little bass fly. Um, my striper fishing video this year, that was the exact fly I was using. I'll do a video on, on these as well. Uh, it's super easy to tie and a very, very effective topwater fly. So a few things like that in there. You know, some more traditional poppers. Um, stuff like that in here. More bass flies. Um, you know, clouser minnows. Some various things in here, deceivers um, that I use for bass. Again, some more kind of bass trout flies, just depending on what the situation presents um, in here. Most of the stuff in here, these are kind of crayfish patterns. More, again, bass type patterns, but uh, I do catch carp on them occasionally. Um, and then right here in the middle, we've got some uh, dry flies. I always make sure I have some dry flies on, you know, not timing year, but... I always like to have a few. So these are all just basically different variations of parachute atoms tied on um, some car hooks so they won't bend out. I had one trip this year where I, I don't, eight or nine different hooks bent out that were trout hooks on carp. So um, yeah, that was a mistake. I normally have that, didn't have it that trip. Okay, so these are kind of fun. Now, these are very, I don't use these very often, but it's usually a situation where like, I'm in an area where people are, fishing for carp or catfish and they a lot of times will have chum in the water these are kind of fun to throw in the air especially if you can see them so i've used these quite a bit at lake powell to catch catfish and carp um you know on the beaches and stuff like that so uh kind of keep a handful of those handy kind of fun patterns uh more leeches and stuff in here um as it gets in here so this one we got some hopper patterns um some beetle and ant patterns um i find the beetle and ant patterns to be better producers than the hopper patterns there's probably areas where hoppers work pretty well but i i've just never seen it that well um i don't know why because i know like on the bear river this year there was hundreds of hoppers and i i couldn't end up get a hopper so i ended up actually switching to a little pair of atoms um, but a beetle would have probably worked real well in that situation too so um so that's kind of it guys those are uh those are the fly boxes i take with me out on the water and i have them with me every time um so I'll end the video there for this one, but I'll uh, I'll get another video and I'll kind of go into more detail about when I use the various patterns and why. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Talk to you soon.